My name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Make sure you go through all the problems in this book. If there is any problem that gives you trouble, there any problem that, uh, that gives you difficulty, you can find the solutions to that. You will find the solution to that problem from day number 251 through 400. This book here, the second edition, contains almost all the same problems and in most cases on the same page numbers as the ones that appeared in the first edition of the revised GRE. We have already solved every single math problem from this book. If you are interested in watching the original solution to any of the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. Right now, we are solving the problems from this book here, the quantitative comparison question, quantitative comparison questions from the 10th edition of the general GRE because the other two books that I just showed you simply do not contain enough quantitative comparison questions. So to get some extra practice from day number 401, we started solving quantitative comparison questions and right now we are on page number 207. Let's turn to it. Page number 207, problem number 6. Problem number 6. Let's see what it has to say. As always, as I always remind you, as soon as I finish setting up the problem, as soon as you as soon as you watch me finish setting up the problem, pause the video immediately on your own, do the problem yourself, and then compare your work against the work that you and I will do together. As I always tell you, you will learn, you will learn more from that way, uh, from, from that method, you will get more out of it that way. Do you understand? Number six. Eighty-three percent of the people in the exam had no problem doing this question, and the question is simply this: three x squared versus 3x whole squared. What I want you to do is pause the video, do what you have to do, whatever it is that you want to do, and then unpause the video and then compare the work together. Do you understand? I'll give you two seconds to do just that. Very good. Now, if you plug in numbers here, there is nothing wrong with it. You could plug in numbers and do it that way by plugging in different values of x and see what happens. And the method is this. And the method is simply solve the problem algebraically. Very simple, very simple proposition. 3x whole squared, 3x whole squared means that it is 9x squared. Here we have 3x squared. 3 is a positive quantity, x squared, even if x turns out to be negative, by the time you square it, this is a positive quantity, this is a positive quantity, this is a positive quantity, which means 3x squared is a positive quantity. Because it is a positive quantity, because it is a positive quantity, it's perfectly okay to divide both columns by 3x squared. If we were to divide both columns by 3x squared, we end up with a 1 on this side, 3 on this side, obviously 3 is bigger, the answer is B. Do you understand? Let's do number 2. Question number 2. Of question number 7 rather. Question number 7 tells us that we are supposed to compare the greatest, greatest prime factors, not factors rather, greatest prime factor of 15 versus the greatest prime factor that we can find of 14. The greatest prime factor of 15 versus the greatest prime factor of 14. So first thing we're going to do, first thing we're going to do is to list all the factors, all the factors of 14 and 15 so that we don't miss anything. Let's start then. Factors of 15 are going to be 1, 3, 5, what else? And 15 I guess. That's it. Those are, fact those are all the factors of 15. Factors of 14 are going to be 1, 2, 7 and 14. We are looking for prime factors. We are looking for prime factors. So since we are looking for prime factors, let's get rid of 1. 1 is not a prime number. And let's get rid of 15. 15 is not prime. And neither is 14. That's it. We are done. 3 and 5. 3 and 5 represent prime factors of 15. 2 and 7 represent prime factors of 14. 
the greatest prime factor. That's actually, technically speaking, strictly speaking, that's not actually a proper grammar here, but they didn't want to give it away because there are only two of them. It's not the greatest, it's the greater. The greater of the two is five. And similarly here, greater of the two is seven because seven is more than five. Because seven is more than five, the answer is B. Question number eight. Question number eight. One is not a prime number, you understand? One is not a prime number. Two is a prime number. Two is the only even number that's a prime number. If you, for some reason, if you happen to be one of those people who has some difficulty understanding prime numbers and, look, and, uh, and recognizing a prime number when you come across one, a very simple solution to it. When you, whenever you have trouble with any mathematical concept, just type in the name of the concept and type in my name and then search for it on the YouTube where you're watching obviously and something will come up. Something has to come up. There are close to 2000 videos on my channel and we have covered a lot of topics. Just type in prime numbers, Keshwani in the quotation or the, as a search, search, search term in the search, search part and the video will pop right up. Watch the video. There are I think like two or three videos on prime numbers that I've made. Watch those videos and, and, and you might you might get something out of it if you happen to be one of those people who has trouble with prime numbers sometimes. Recognizing, recognizing prime numbers. Enough of the talk. Number eight. Number eight, the percentile was 74% when it was given. We are told that we are going to buy 20 gallons of gasoline. 20 gallons of gasoline was purchased for one dollar and one six nine cents per gallon instead of instead of one two five nine per gallon. The question is how much did we save? Savings savings on twenty gallon versus dollar eighty. Pause the video, do it yourself first. So we're buying twenty gallons of gasoline. We're buying twenty gallons of gasoline and here's what's going on. What's what what we're being told is that the regular price of the gasoline is one point two five nine dollars per gallon, but we purchase it at one point six nine gallons per one one point six one one point one six nine dollars per gallon. The question is how does the savings on, on 20 gallons, on the purchase of 20 gallons, how does the saving on the purchase of 20 gallons compare with dollar 80? I'll give you two seconds to pause and unpause so that you can do it yourself. Okay, here's what's going on. Here's what's going on. The regular price is this price right here. Forget about the dollar. Dollar plays no role because dollar appears in both parts. So the regular price is this amount. 0.259, I'm going to write that as 26 because it's the same thing. And this is 1.169, so this is a discount price. 169, I'm going to write that as 17. So how much are we saving per gallon? We are saving, we are saving 9 cents per gallon. That's what we are saving. The discount is 9 cents per gallon, 9 times 10. The rest is very easy. 9 times 10 is 90, therefore 9 times 20 is going to be dollar 80. 9 times 20 is going to be dollar 80, of course. So the amount of savings that we will have on the purchase of 20 gallons of gasoline under this scenario is dollar 80, which is exactly what appears in the second column, and therefore the answer is C. Let's move on to number 9. Question number 9. Question number nine. Question number nine is 76 percentile. About a quarter of the people missed it. Here's what problem says. X we are told is eight miles west of Z. And Y, we are told, is 7 miles 
north of z. And we're being asked to compare in column A the distance of x, y, the distance of x to y, in column B, 9 miles. Distance of x, y versus 9 miles. Again, pause the video. I don't have to keep reminding you every single time. Pause the video, do it yourself, and then, then, then compare the work. I'll give you two seconds to do just that. Very good. Here we go. We are told that y is 7 miles north of z. Let's take care of the north first. So here's our z. Here's our z, let's say. And y we are told, where's my pointer? y we are told is 7 miles north of z. So north is going up, right? Going up. And here is our y, and this is 7 miles. So far so good. We are further told that x happens to be 8 miles, 8 miles west of z. West of z is going this way, and x is 8 miles. So far so good. The distance that we have to compare is this distance right here, x to y, this distance right here, this distance right here, which of course is, 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 is this is a 90 degree because we are going straight up and down, perpendicular and, and horizontal. This distance x to y it's a simple application of Pythagorean theorem is all it is. It's a simple application of Pythagorean theorem. The distance x to y, let's call it d. This distance is squared. It's going to be simply 49, 7 squared plus 8 squared, which is simply 49 plus 64. What do we do next? This is where the trick part comes in. Always remember, always I'll remind you, which is why I always remind you, which is why I make a point of writing down the word computation and then crossing it out for emphasis, to emphasize the fact that these questions are called quantitative comparison. Nobody is asking us to compute anything at all. They are not asking us, if you thought that the question is asking us how much is the distance from x to y, that is not the bloody question. The question is not what is the distance from x to y. The question is, the distance from x to y, is it more than, less than, or equal to 9? Which is not, which is not the same as asking how much is the distance. When you ask me how much is the distance from x to y, and then in that case I have no choice but to calculate it. Here we are not being asked how much it is, we simply have to compare it against 9, which is very straightforward. 49 plus 64, which is, which is same as, which is, which, is, which is approximately same as, which is approximately same as 50 plus 60. 50 plus 60 is already 110, and the square, the square of 9 is 81. Of course 110 is far bigger than 81, the answer is A. We don't know what the square root of this quantity is. We don't know what the square root of this quantity is, but the square root of that quantity is a hell of a lot more than 9 because it adds up to almost 110. The square root of 110 is going to be more than 81, obviously. The square root of, uh, the square root of 110 is going to be, of course, more than the square root of 81. That's all. The answer is A. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.